Hello everyone, today I want to make a quick video about configuring custom G-code macro buttons on Clipper installations. For that I'm going to show you two of my uh, Clipper installations. One of them is my Voron 0, the other one is my Voron 2. And by showing you them, I will show you how to configure them in firmware. But before I get to that, I want to talk about how you wire them and where you wire them. So the how is pretty simple, at least in terms of what I recommend, and that is uh, wire them in a way that when you press the button the pin is shorter to ground that's a safe and easy way of uh, doing the wiring and you can use that for any of my mods or I think uh, I think some one of the crew members did a similar mod with uh, Cherry MX switches instead of tactile switches so if you prefer that that's an option as well it will work for that as well or any other button for, for that matter and uh, how you wire them now that is a little more complicated theoretically you should be able to wire them into any GPIO on any of the MCUs you have connected to your Raspberry Pi or your Raspberry Pi if you're using the Raspberry Pi MCU but uh, Clipper seems to have some bugs with this so uh, for example you can't really use Raspberry Pi's GPIO pins uh, they trigger randomly for some reason. I tried this on two separate installations, on two separate Raspberry Pis, one on my Voron 0, the other one on my Voron 2, and it didn't work for either one of them, and the exact same configuration for the pins on a different MCU, they work, so this is something to do, some bugged with the Pi MCU, not sure uh, what's causing it, it might be something to do with the Linux kernel, but uh, yeah, I'm not going to go into that, you can't use those but what you can use is for example the spare uh, end stop pins you have on your SKRs if you're on Voron 2 for example or you can use the expansion port on your Duet uh, Wi-Fi or any other Duet I guess if Duet 3 has them as well, I actually didn't look and uh, yeah, the way I did it on my Voron 0 is I wired them to the mentioned uh, expansion pins on my Duet Wi-Fi on my Voron Zero and the way I <coughs> the way I did it on my V2 I added a custom MCU uh, it's a Maple Mini this this MCU here and uh, yeah flashing a Maple Mini with a firmware is a little complicated and it's also beyond the scope of this video but if you do a quick search you can find the relevant information you just need to switch the maple mini or a blue blue pill if you prefer into a flashing bootloader mode flash the bootloader then uh, get it out of there connect via USB and flash clipper firmware on that again I'm not going to go into all, all that but you can do that or you can use an Arduino or you can use pretty much anything else you want really as long as it's a functional MCU, it will do, so if you don't have enough uh, spare pins on your MCUs, you can add another one. It's a nice feature of Clipper that it supports these. As for the way you configure them, it's also pretty simple. So for example, on my V2, this is how I have them configured. So uh, these names are actually correspond to the pin. So that's why I named them that, but you can give them any name you want after G code button. The pin, you uh, you add these two, this specifies ground and this inverts it. And then just the same way you would enter any other pin. So if, you, if it, this is your only MCU, you just enter its uh, pin. If you are using multiple MCUs, for example, right with this, I have a MCU called STM, so you add the STM, then the pin, and then press G code, you can add uh, your G code. There is also a release G code, if I remember correctly, uh, but uh, yeah, you definitely have to have the press G code in there, without that. Uh, it uh, doesn't work, you can leave it empty, that's something you can do if you want it triggered when you release the button, but again you have to have them there. Also you can have uh, analog inputs as well if you wish through the again the same method. So 
the full documentation you can find on the example extras file on Clapper GitHub. So if you just click on button, you can see every argument we can use. Uh, I'm not going to go into how we do analog stuff, but yeah, you can find them here if you are again using something analog. And yeah, the release C code you can configure, but you have to have the press C code. That's just the way Clipper works. And uh, as I said, you can have pretty much anything you want. You can have multiple G codes. Just enter them in separate lines and make sure you have some spaces before that so Clipper realizes it. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. It's, as I said, it's a pretty simple video. So uh, yeah, that's basically the way you do it. Uh, there is one more thing that I want to show you though, so uh, it's not technically button related but it could come in handy. So let's say you have a relay that you control, you want to control through a button and let's say you want that button to toggle the light of the LED. It's a pretty simple idea but it's not as easy to configure. So uh, yeah, first of all, after setting up your relay control, through an output pin. This, in this case, I'm using an output pin on my Raspberry Pi MCU and uh, setting the LED on and LED off macros. You don't have to have them as macros, you can have them in here as well. I created a LED toggle macro and here you can use if statements based on the Jinja format. But uh, the problem is you need to be able to read the state of the pin and that's a little trickier. There is a doc there is documentation on what everything is called on Clippers uh, documentation somewhere, but uh, yeah, I don't remember where. But you can, for example, use this output pin. Then whatever you named it, I named it LED. You can read it like this, and if it is equal to one, which means if it's on, you have the off command, and if it's anything else, which means it's, if it's off, it turns it on. And uh, yeah, this command basically toggles the LED and you can use that in your press C code. Or you can, theoretically, you can just have this in there and then replace the LED off and LED on. It, you can just have them as one thing if you wish. But uh, yeah, I like to be able to execute these commands one by one. For example, not right now, but in the future I may, for example, want to turn the LEDs on if they're off when starting a print and turning them off when the print is finished. If I want to do that, I can just add them to the start and finish G-codes uh, without having to add this uh, complicated thing in it. So uh, yeah, that's just an uh, easy way of doing that. And uh, yeah, as I said, this is a pretty simple video, but uh, yeah, I wanted to show you how this works. So I hope you found this useful. If you did, please leave me a like down below. And thanks for watching.